Welcome everybody. We're missionaries of our Mother of the Eucharist and we welcome you to this presentation. Um, we hope that it'll draw you to your deeper heart and we have been in the missionaries of our Mother of the Eucharist, well, together for a little over two years, but Lilla Marie started it in the year um, 2004 and uh, she's had lay people uh, involved as well. Very, it's a very small corporation, nonprofit corporation, and just mainly to support my semi-aeromedical life and my evangelical outreach of drawing people to the Eucharist and Mary, and, and to um, the deeper heart, which is the inner healing aspect of our mission as well. And we've both been in a consecrated uh, life for 20 plus years, and um, hopefully we pray that this will be a blessing uh, to you, this presentation, because it comes from our hearts. We were actually doing this presentation in the chapel, asking <clears throat> Jesus in the Eucharist to, that his healing graces flow from his presence, his presence right behind us as we're spending time sharing our hearts with you, sharing what our Lord has revealed to us, we pray that graces will flow from His presence and through us as well to your hearts, whatever it is that you are in need of right now. So we just encourage you as we begin this retreat to dispose your hearts, to be sensitive in your heart to what God would want to say to you during this time. We're asking Jesus to <clears throat> speak um, through us to you, and we've been praying for you. We've been uh, uh, keeping you before the Blessed Sacrament and asking the Lord to just uh, bring special graces to you and healing graces, whatever you need, um, in any way that you need it. And so this retreat is definitely, the main theme of it is put out into the deep. And this is what John Paul II encouraged us in at the beginning of this new millennium, to put out into the deep. And that's what we want to do with you this weekend, together, to dive deep into the hearts of Jesus and Mary, and through diving deep into their hearts, to be drawn deeply into communion with our triune God, and to live the fullness of our baptismal vows, and especially for those of us who have given our lives to Christ to be his bride, it even adds a new, a deeper dimension of fostering that deep espousal union. So at the beginning, the first um, picture I'd like to share with you is actually of the vision, uh, St. John Bosco's most famous dream and in this uh, dream, he had an image of a huge ship on water representing the Catholic Church and many boats surrounding it and the waters were gradually getting rougher and rougher and there was a Holy Father and the clergy in the front of the boat, but it went through a series of Holy Fathers throughout his dream and the waters gradually got rougher and rougher. Some of the boats that were surrounding the ship actually were shooting at the ship. They were things against the Catholic Church. And one of the Holy Fathers began steering the ship in between these two pillars. And on the top of one was Mary, the top of the other one higher up, our Eucharistic Lord. And every time other boats would shoot at the ship, a wind would blow from the two pillars and bring healing to the ship the wind representing the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so it finally gets to one Holy Father who actually anchors on to the two pillars. Before he anchored on, the waters had gotten so rough because they were gradually getting rougher and rougher. But the moment he anchors on, all of a sudden there's a total calm. And many of the boats that had been shooting at the ship actually begin sinking and others actually began anchoring on to the two pillars as well. And John Bosco prophesied that in 1862, he said, <clears throat> there will be chaos in the church. Tranquility will not return until the Holy Father succeeds in anchoring the boat of Peter to the two pillars 
of devotion to the Eucharist and Mary. And Bosco actually prophesied that this would happen in the year 199 question mark. Now I'm, I'm going to touch on that a little more, but here's another vision image of the two pillars looking at it from actually being in the boat and just seeing how rough the waters are and the chaos that's going on. And do we not feel like the church is in that, in that place right now in a way with all the chaos, the confusion, everything that's going on right now? And so <clears throat> we have here, this is actually what St. John Paul II shared with us. He has actually been guiding the church between the two pillars of the devotion to the Eucharist and Mary throughout his pontificate and just a consummation of it culminating at the end of his time here on earth. His final encyclical, he, he just uh, shares the plan that he has given us as a church at the beginning of this new millennium. And this is what he says, to contemplate the face of Christ and to contemplate it with Mary is the program which I have set before the church at the dawn of the third millennium. To contemplate Christ above all in the living sacrament of his body and his blood. And of course, this is very uh, beautiful guidance from our Holy Father, very clearly uh, confirming John Bosco's vision of, of this taking place. And we know that we haven't quite experienced the anchoring on, where there's a total peace and calm, but everything's a process. And definitely this is in process of taking place. The church is being drawn to anchor on deeply to these two pillars. And it's the program that has been set out for us as Catholics at the beginning of this new millennium. And my prayer, our prayer, is that Catholics everywhere will, will respond to John Paul II's plea for us. Uh, you know, even John Paul's um, in letter on the rosary, I think it was 2002, at the end of his letter, <clears throat> he says, he asks all of us to pray the rosary. You know, bishops, priests, religious, sisters, families, everybody, young people. He says, pray the rosary. And, and after he says that, he says, may this appeal of mine not go unheard, exclamation mark. So John Paul II was strongly encouraging us, admonishing us to respond to, to the mission, to, to these, um, what he has been guiding us in. And the very exciting thing about this famous dream of Bosco and John Paul II's encouragement for us is that this is not just about a devotion, a distant devotion that a superficial devotion that we, you know, connect with up here. And in fact, the devotion to the two pillars is actually devotion to the two hearts. It's devotion to the sacred Eucharistic heart of Jesus and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's, it's actually meant to be, we are meant to be invited to anchor on in a deeply personal way to the two hearts that involves our whole person, body, soul, and spirit. And that's the only way it can be. And this is why John Paul II says, put out into the deep. He's speaking of going to your deeper heart and communing with the two hearts, which leads us to communion with our triune God. And if we notice the hearts of Jesus and Mary, their hearts are exposed. And, and this is the message that they give us, encouraging us 
that our hearts are meant to be exposed to them as well. We're not meant to just have a, a relationship with them that is on a spiritual level only. And this is actually, again, our beloved John Paul II, in his writings to us on theology of the body, confronted this dualism that many Catholics have of tending toward angelism or animalism, of tending toward over-spiritualizing or just living the human life and putting aside the spiritual life. He said there must be an integration of the human and spiritual and he said we must be transformed from within. We're not called to just be this pious holiness that represses our humanity but rather we're meant to allow our humanity to be fully uh, permeated with Christ's divinity and this is the grace of anchoring onto the two hearts, to the two pillars, because Jesus and Mary draw us to that fullness of what it means to surrender to God, to be in relationship with God. Mary, Jesus and Mary are the most fully human of any of us. Of course, Jesus is God as well, fully human, fully divine. Mary is fully human. She's full creature. But they both lived the fullness of their humanity in opening themselves in this communion with God, with the Father. And so this is our calling, and this is what we're desiring to go deeper in. And the hearts of Jesus and Mary are truly living and beating among us. And we can see it so clearly in the many miracles that have been happening. The many Eucharistic miracles that take place where Jesus' heart actually not only um, bleeds, but turns into heart flesh. As, as we can see in the um, miracle of Lanciano, and, and even the many statues and pictures of Mary crying tears even some tears of blood, the hearts of Jesus and Mary are living and beating among us in our time. And a very beautiful devotion to the Sacred Heart, um, St. Margaret Mary is the one that actually began to promote this more fully in the church. And she was before the Eucharist one day, and Jesus came forth from the Eucharist as you see in this picture that I show with his heart exposed and Jesus said to her my Eucharistic presence is truly my sacred heart living and beating among you Jesus's Eucharistic presence is truly his sacred heart living and beating among us and if we really allow ourselves to be disposed to the graces of this personal communion with Jesus, to come to know Him heart to heart, not only when we're before Him in the Eucharist, but when we receive Him into us, to allow our, our hearts to be exposed to His as his heart is exposed to us, to allow our hearts to rest against his heart and to allow, to give ourselves permission to let what stirs in our heart to be surrendered to him, to be presented to him, to, be, to invite him into. And this is um, our calling as Christians. We're meant to not only remain on a certain level of saying our prayers or going to Mass or doing this or that, but John Paul II tells us, put out into the deep. Keep going deeper and deeper. There's always more. It's an um, unending depth that we'll never even reach fully in this life, but the more we continue to open ourselves, dispose ourselves, and become receptive 
the deeper we can go in our communion with Jesus, with Mary, with the Father, with the Holy Spirit. So, um, St. Margaret Mary actually said of the Sacred Heart, she said, could you realize what happiness it is to love the Sacred Heart of Jesus? You would despise all else to love but it alone. And this is truly where our happiness and fulfillment lie, in this life and the next. It's being in the heart of Jesus, in the heart of God, in his love for us, to be in the womb of God's love for us. And so, let's see what we have here. I have an image of the Holy Trinity because at the heart of all that we're sharing with you in this retreat, Everything is meant to draw us deeper in communion with our triune God who dwell within us through baptism. Everything about the church teachings, the sacramental life, the structures of the church is meant to draw us into this deep communion with our triune God. So the primary tools for anchoring on to the two pillars John Paul II highlighted uh, for us as Catholics to aid us in anchoring on. And these primary tools are Holy Mass, Adoration, Consecration to Mary, and the Rosary. So the key in entering into these, these special devotions that we have as Catholics, which are tremendous, that most Catholics don't utilize fully, the key to entering in is that we expose and dispose ourselves in order to encounter Christ, to encounter Mary, to encounter the Holy Trinity. If we don't have this part in place of disposing our hearts and exposing our hearts to God and encountering God in these devotions, then we're missing out. And so, on that note, I'm going to have our beloved uh, Sister Mary Claire share a little bit about how she began to realize that she needed this special key in place in her life. Okay, um, thank you, Lilla Marie. Uh, disposing and exposing ourselves, that's the key. Um, for myself, being in religious life for 28 years uh, plus, as religious, um, people put us on a pedestal. Uh, uh, a lot of times we're not able to be really real, you know, and, um, and, and to a certain degree, I mean, that, that's, that, you know, you have to have a, a, a certain holy reserve, you know, and you can't just let yourself all hang out. I'm not saying that. but. A lot of times um, we can wear a mask as religious and not even realize it. And we're putting on this, this holy mask. And uh, for myself, I, I, I think I probably was doing that to a certain degree, not even realizing it, but to a certain degree I was. And um, when I'd go before the Blessed Sacrament, uh, I would pray to our Lord and I would talk to our Lord, but I wasn't like really sharing with him the depths of my heart and you might want to say all the disordered inclinations that I had or um, my poopy scoop you might want to say um, I didn't want to share that part of me with him and um, I kind of buried everything pushed it down uh, things from my past now we all have things that come up from our past. We all have wounds. We all have uh, uh, things that we wished never happened and, and things that we push down. Um, and it could be small things, but it could be bigger things as well. But all these things can, no matter how small they are, no matter how big they are, they can uh, keep us from going where we really need to go. And the Lord wants us to go really deeply in his Eucharistic sacred heart 
and bring everything to him, open up all the rooms of our hearts, not close them off, not repress things. He wants us to open everything, open open our, our whole self to him. And for myself, um, there were things, you know, from my childhood that I just chose not to look at. And I thought, ah, no big deal, that's not going to, it's not going to, haunt me it's not going to come back to me it's not going to I'm going to be fine you know and when we think that way um that's a big key right there that it's probably going to show up some way somehow and it comes out sideways um in our relationships with other people um and just just in different ways it will come out sideways for myself it did in, in my relationships um And I never did realize, you know, but I had, we all had this longing and this desire to have this intimacy, this intimate relationship with our Lord and um, to be, to share with him the deepest part of our being. And that's just part of who we are. That's who he created us to be. He wants us to go to the depths of our hearts. He wants us to go to those deepest places of our hearts that those most intimate uh, sensitive places of our hearts because he wants to touch those sensitive places he wants to heal those sensitive places with his um, his hands his wounded hands because by his wounds we are healed and so for myself um, I didn't really take uh, these these truths these things that that um, disordered inclinations or I never took them in front of the Blessed Sacrament I thought oh no this is you know I'm not even gonna go there but see I had blocked it out so completely I was so good at good at it and blocked it out totally that I didn't even know I needed it in the first place and I needed to bring it to the Lord I thought I was doing the right thing this all these years you know But as I said, it comes out slowly but surely. And thanks be to God, um, you know, I met this wonderful Lilla Marie, and um, she had the tools to be able to um, draw me to my deeper heart and to uh, make me realize that, you know, Jesus wants to hear about your disordered inclinations, your your, um, faults, weaknesses, poopy scoop whatever he and sure sure she asked me to share my testimony of of how it happened well um for me um Lilla Marie was uh uh, visiting uh I was in a different uh community and um I had asked her to come and and visit it's a long story but anyway she she ended up coming to visit me and we went for a walk and um I was going on a walk with her to really uh, try to (laughs) draw her into into coming into the new community that I was in. Uh, But the Lord had different plans. So we were walking along and um, I just felt like the Lord was knocking on my heart and he said, open up to her what you have closed off. And I was like, no, no way, Lord. I, I, I can't do that. I don't even know her. But I just kept feeling him and tugging at my heart and saying open up to her what you have closed off and I was like oh wow I don't know if I can do this and so I just I I I kind of ignored it and as we were walking along and talking I just I knew I had to do it and so um I sat her down I said can I speak to you and she said of course and um I said you know I'm I'm gonna share something with you I don't know how you're gonna take this but I'm going to share it with you. It's something that's been nagging me since I've been a child. And, you know, I really have not shared this with anybody. And um, and I've brought out some things in confession, but that was it, you know. And But I feel like I'm supposed to tell you. I feel like the Lord wants me to. So I did. And I shared some um, things with her. And at the end of it, I felt like I felt like the floodgates just opened up in my heart. And I just began to cry. And because I was able to share with someone who actually listened and who wasn't like horrified. I guess somehow we think that the other person too is going to be horrified. And I thought, well, she's listening and she's loving me in this, you know, and that was really healing for me. 
and and I remember she said can I just give you a hug well that was just like a special grace for me and I felt like it was Jesus hugging me through her and so it was like a, a great grace for me that and it was it just opened up the floodgates for me and um, and I remember her her telling me you know she says don't you think you know Jesus wants to hear all of this too have you ever brought this before him in the Blessed Sacrament and I was like no I actually haven't you know you would think being in the religious life for 28 years that I would have done that that I would have brought that to our Lord our, our Lord but no um, uh, I had all this the, these other meditations and everything that I've I've learned throughout the years and and um, being with our Lord reading the scriptures putting myself in the scriptures just all these different things I was doing um, but I really wasn't being with our Lord I wasn't really like opening up the, the the doors of my heart that were closed that needed to be open in order for him to come in and for him to really truly be my bridegroom because that was the thing that I was lacking I I remember uh, thinking some of some of the sisters wow they're just too romantic and talking about Jesus being their bridegroom and all and but I wanted it deep down I really wanted it and I wanted to have that relationship with him um, where I was his 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 spouse because he's my spouse and I really longed for that but I just I couldn't go there you know and um, but the Lord opened the doors for me at that moment I was able to start journaling before the Blessed Sacrament um, that was one thing that Lilla Marie sh uh, shared with me to take a journal before the Blessed Sacrament and just open my heart up to the Lord and just tell him everything all my aches my pains my woundedness my poopy scoop whatever it is and just be real with him and it began to really open up my heart and I was able to be free really free for the first time and I just en encourage all my 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 sisters in Christ who are consecrated um, especially to to not be afraid to just bring everything to him he wants to hear it he loves you so much and he wants to hear it he wants you to bring your whole self to him your whole heart everything that you've ignored or buried or whatever um, because he's that kind of bridegroom thank you thank you for that was beautiful sharing and the very beautiful thing about what sister Mary Claire shared is that that is the grace of the Immaculate Heart of Mary because this is what Mary does for us she she whose heart is so fully exposed and disposed mm -hmm. that's what she does when we enter her Immaculate Heart I'm, I'm gonna give you an an analogy <clears throat> our hearts are like houses you've probably heard this analogy before our hearts are like houses with many rooms as Mary Claire mentioned a little bit about and Jesus may knock at the door of our hearts and we might invite him into the living room and spend some time with him whether it's just on Sunday or it may be a little bit time every day but then we might go into other parts of our our heart house and and um, Jesus wants to come with us but we say no wait you stay there I'm gonna be back it, but Jesus wants to come into every room we find ourselves in and uh, this is if we think of the Immaculate Heart of Mary every single room closet nook and cranny of her heart is totally open and exposed and inviting Christ in the Divine Mercy Christ in and when we enter Mary's heart this is what she gradually draws us to she gradually draws us to dispose our hearts to invite Christ into the room we find ourselves in in the present moment so uh, Sister Mary Claire shared about how she had to be become more integrated in her heart and her life but I had a, I have my own testimony about this as well because when I had my conversion a long time ago I was actually um, I had a very profound supernatural experience of God I was actually even on my way to Hollywood in hopes of being a movie director but through our Heavenly Mother 
I was drawn back to God in the church and and I really feel like my conversion experience is a little like St. Paul when he was knocked off his horse. It was just that profound that I, my whole life turned around and I knew I had to give my life to God. But at the same time, even though I had had such powerful spiritual experience, um, I was not very mature emotionally. And so even though my spiritual side was very lofty, I, I was tending to over-spiritualize because I did not have, um, I repressed my feelings and I really wasn't in touch with my feelings. And this was 20 something years ago. And, but I was very devoted to Mary and consecrated to Mary. And I was led to really begin to open my heart in those parts of my heart that I really was ashamed of didn't like about myself um, things when I, I just would rather have been say God alone all I need is God but our Lord was leading me to just really get in touch with my deeper heart and so as I had to get in touch with my heart and that's why I was able to help her with the tools that I had gained from it because I had been in a spot of over spiritualizing and not really being in touch with my feelings but through Mary and her Immaculate Heart, I was led to gradually expose my heart and I'm continuing to be led in the rooms that I'm not inviting Christ into in the present moment. So we have a picture here of a woman with a mask on and next to it a heart with uh, walls around it. And that can be a tendency for us you know, in this life, because unless we really know God's unconditional love and acceptance of us, we need to find our identity in something. And if it's not God and the truth of who we are and created to be, then we're always going to be disordered in different ways, building up walls and putting on masks, but we're not going to be um, where God wants us to be.